Luke uh, 23, verses 38 to 43. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal, criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The hill is a place called the skull. It is shaped like a bear's skull. The Romans execute their criminals on the skull in Jerusalem. They cross two wooden beams together and hang the criminal on them. The criminals are affixed at the cross with nails. Then they are left hanging on the cross to die a slow death. There is the shame of people looking at you as you are nailed to the cross. The cross is the worst form of execution in the Roman Empire. It is reserved for insurrectionists and hardcore criminals. There are three men on the crosses on this hill one sunny morning just after the Jewish Passover in AD 30. Uh, the first man at the center um, is a man who was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth and made the fishing village of Capernaum his place of residence in the last three years. He has been teaching and healing in Jerusalem um, in this last week. He came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. People put their cloaks and palm branches on the ground for him. He then creates a scene by chasing out the merchants uh, out of the temple courts. You could sense that there was tension between the Jewish religious leaders and this man in Jerusalem in the last week. Uh, this first man has been through a night of turmoil. He was praying with his followers at the Garden of Gethsemane in the Mount of Olives last night. A deputation of people from the temple high priest come to arrest him. Then he goes through trials uh, before the Jewish council, the Roman governor Pilate, uh, King Herod of Galilee, and then back uh, to Pontius Pilate. Um, Pilate sentences this man on the cross. But there is quite a consensus with everyone except the Jewish religious leaders that this man was innocent. Yet Pilate reluctantly sentenced him to the cross. The words of this first man are strange indeed. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. First, he talks to his father. Is his father in the audience? Uh, as he utters these words, he looks up to the sky. In the last three years, this man has been claiming that God is his father. And this is the very thing that puts him on the cross. The Jewish religious leaders are insistent that God is God and humanity is humanity. Any person who claims that God is Father is committing the crime of blasphemy, um, acting irreverently against God. Um, now, there is no parent who like to see their son on the cross. Uh, his mother is in the crowd. Uh, she is crying as she sees her son dying on the cross. Second, this first man um, says that he forgives the people present because they do not know what they are doing. This is an incredible gesture on his part. He is forgiving all those presents, including those Roman soldiers who whip him and put those nails on him. He is also saying that they do not know what they do. Um, uh, the problem is People actually know what they're doing. The Jewish religious leaders want to get rid of him. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers, just want to do their job. And everyone else uh, is not doing anything because they are do under authority. Yes, what this first man is doing is a supernatural act. Only someone with an incredibly forgiving heart can do what he is doing. The second man is convicted of robbery. He has a different attitude to what's going on. 
he says to the first man, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. You can see his attitude about life from his mouth. Life is a matter of grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. He seizes upon the statements that others have made about this first man, uh, that he is the Messiah they have been waiting for. Since this first man might be the Messiah, the robber grabs his one last opportunity to save himself. He is a robber uh, to his dying moments. Grab something while you can. Get this Messiah to save you, if at all possible. The third man, however, has a different picture of the first man. He disagrees with his fellow robber. Don't you fear God since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. The first thing we can say about the second robber's words is that he takes responsibility for his actions of the past, whatever they are. He realizes that what he and his friend have done is wrong. They have plundered other people of their possessions. They have no right to be pronounced innocent. His friend, the first robber, takes no responsibility whatsoever for his actions. Instead, his first reaction is to get the so-called Messiah uh, to call on his followers to save them. This second robber faces up to his criminal past. He knows that he's on the cross for his crimes. Um, the other thing that this second robber mentions is his fear of God. He realizes that it is not only the criminal justice that is punishing him, they are also getting what they deserve under the hands of a judging God. For his second statement, this third man utters these words to the first man. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The third man not just looks as this first man as the Messiah, he calls him, the first man, by his name Jesus. Yes, this is the name of the first man on the center cross. His name is Jesus. And you know what Jesus means? Jesus means the Lord saves. God saves. So by using Jesus' name, this second robber is also declaring that there is something special about Jesus' actions on the cross. Um, somehow, Jesus is going to establish his kingdom through his actions on the cross. And so therefore, he asks Jesus to remember him when Jesus goes into his kingdom. This King Jesus is a different kind of king. Most kings would use the sword on other people to establish their kingdom. King Jesus establishes his kingship by letting a sword pierce his side. Other kings will stay clear of any cross. Instead, this King Jesus embraces the cross and all its shame. So Jesus says to the second robber, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word in New Testament Greek that is translated as paradise is Paradiso. It is a Persian Hebrew expression for garden. Bible scholars tell us that it is a reference to, uh, to the expression of all things beautiful um, as to what creation was meant to be, the picture of the garden in Genesis chapter 2 before the human being fell. Jesus, when he mentions Paradiso, Jesus is referring to God's garden. Somehow after today's events, the second robber and Jesus are going to God's garden. And I believe this second robber is the first person in the New Testament to express faith and trust in Jesus. God saves. That's what his name means. As a result, Jesus ushers him into God's garden. God has been working on his garden for an eternity. Good Friday is the pivotal point of God's gardening. In April 2004, Marine Corporal Jason Dunham led a patrol in an Iraqi town near the Syrian border. 
The patrol stopped a convoy of cars leaving the scene of an attack on a marine convoy. An occupant of one of the cars attacked Dunham and the two fought hand to hand. As they fought, Dunham yelled to his marines, No! No! Watch his hand! The attacker then dropped a grenade. Dunham hurled himself on the top of it, using his helmet to blunt the force of the blast. Dunham was critically wounded in the explosion and died eight days later at Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland. On Veterans Day 2006, it was announced that Dunham would receive the Congressional Medal of Honor after his death. His was a selfless act of courage to save his mellow fellow Marines, said Sergeant Med Major Daniel. Um, he knew what he was doing shares Lance Corporal Jason. He wanted to save Marines' lives from that granite. Uh, from that granite. Um, in various media accounts, fellow Marines told how Denham had extended his enlistment shortly before he died so he could help his fellow comrades. We told him he was crazy for coming out here, said Lance Corporal Mark. He decided to come out here to fight with us. All he wanted was to make sure his boys made it back home. And his boys did make it back home because of his sacrifice. In some ways, his death shouldn't have happened. Yet, it happened. Like the death of Jesus, it saved some lives.